Hey everybody, and we're back for another exciting new episode of Why Don't You Want My Stuff? And I am your host, Josh Levine. Today's episode, we're gonna talk all about Chinese collectibles. The Chinese market is extremely hot. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, you've probably heard stories of Ming vases selling for millions and millions of dollars and all of these things, but I'm gonna talk about like things happening here. And just recently in Arizona, we had handled an estate in two, uh, Tempe actually, Tempe, Arizona, and the gentleman had collected Buddhas his entire life. And I'm talking Buddhas of all sizes, shapes, uh, store. I mean, some of these were Ikea, some of these were just yard sale finds, etc. He just collected anything Buddha. People collect strange things. I've had pig collectors, goat collectors, uh, chicken collectors, Hummel collectors, Yadro collectors, you know, a, a collector. Well, this gentleman collected Buddhas. And he had over 300 of these Buddhas ranging in sizes from, you know, a pinky all the way up to life size. Um, nothing to me that stood out other than just the broad spectrum of eras, probably from like the, uh, the Japanese from the Meiji period or the Qing dynasty and the Chinese. And uh, you see a lot of these because they were tourist pieces that were brought back after the war, after World War II, after the Korean conflict, etc. Well, they're really hot now, this market, because the Chinese want their antiques and collectibles back. Mao had expatriated a lot of these during the People's Revolution. People weren't allowed to own things with like ancestry on them, so a lot of them were actually confiscated and then, of course, sold later through uh, the United States through like department stores like Gumps, etc., uh, Marshall Fields. Some of these fine antiques would actually turn up at department stores in the 50s and 60s and they have been sold in the US. Well now, people want them. Because remember as I told you, the baby boomers are getting rid of their stuff and the millennials don't want it. Well, they don't want their parents' stuff, so they're putting these up for auction and they're realizing fantastic price. So here we are in 2014, we're in Tempe, Arizona, cleaning out this house with this estate and we cataloged everything and put it online. Now online it was on a website called Invaluable, which is a large platform that reaches worldwide, but it has bidders from all over the world and they can see the catalogs and then bid on them. So it really exposes the items to a really good marketplace. There's a plug for Invaluable, they can give me $3 back. Um, so it's just a great way to get an international audience. So right before we went to auction them, again, we had estimated values on these lots because in some cases we were selling two and three Buddhas at a time. We had only pulled out a couple that were very unusual to us, but we were by no means experts in them. But again, if you expose them to the market, the people are looking for these things, they will tell you what they're worth. So all of a sudden, I look out into the crowd, we're about halfway through the auction and the entire audience is like Chinese nationals. I was like, they flew in for this sale. So as I'm auctioning, I kept waiting for each lot to come up and I'm like looking at the screen like, this is the one, I know, this is the lot. And it'd sell for $300. And I'm like, okay, no, it wasn't that one. We get to almost to the very end of the sale and this, this small Buddha, it's about this big, bronze Buddha, Qing Dynasty comes up for sale. I had seen some that looked similar and the screen pops up and I believe the bid was at $11,000 from the internet before I even started bid calling, which I probably almost fainted. Well, lo and behold, I'm not going to take you, I, I know they don't like these vlogs to be too long, so I'm not going to go through the whole bidding chant, but lo and behold, the bidding reached $80,000, and with buyer's premium, that was $96,000, and the, the buyer paid for it immediately, and it was shipped back to the mainland China. Um, the family was ecstatic, obviously, because they just thought dad collected Buddhas and, you know, didn't think, maybe thought there were $10,000 worth of antiques in the house. You know, your average house, you know, collector might have five, ten thousand $10,000 in stuff in there. And this, this was exceptional. So, you know, oh, best part of the story, I didn't tell you, as we're handing the Buddha to the runner from the, from the auction block, I noticed on the bottom, it still had a $10 Goodwill sticker on the bottom of it from when dad had bought it. So I, of course, peeled it off really gently as it went back to the crowd because the last thing I wanted to do was ship that to the winning bidder with a $10 Goodwill sticker on it. They probably would have been upset with that. But it was a treasure. They received it. It's a wonderful, and now it has a wonderful new home and it's back where it belongs. But these things are in Goodwills. They are at yard sales. They are out there. As I always say, have an expert look. Even in this case, we would not have known. If this was in a yard sale, I must admit. Now I look at every single Buddha and now I consider myself a Buddha expert. Not really. But 
I know enough to be dangerous. So I tell you, once you, this is how you get educated. You know what to look for. You start to see these things out there and it's funny how you'll you know you'll really bone up on something like that when you see what prices you can realize so once again I'm Josh from from uh, why don't you want my stuff and I hope to see you uh, just about every other day or every day I don't know I, I tried to film one of these this morning and uh, uh, the cat would not cooperate she just wanted to go outside so anyway that's Penelope Johnson and again I swear she's gonna star in future episodes Josh is out.